welcome to the Peekaboo Pattern Shop So Along. I'm excited to be here today. Uh, I think it's evening in the States and we have uh, it's morning time here in Australia. So today I am sewing up the Women's Essential Tea from Peekaboo Patterns. Thank you to everyone who's joining. I'd love if you popped in the comments below where you're from. Uh, I really love interactive uh, Facebook Live. So if you've got questions or you want to chat to me, just pop them in the comments and I can answer what I can. But I thought I would do a little bit of an intro for those that don't know me. My name is Megan and I'm from Sew and Tell Australia. So in case you can't tell from my accent and from all the lead up, I am Australian. I am in Melbourne. So uh, it is pretty windy and cold here today, but it's not too bad. I'm nice and warm inside. So I am a mum of two. I've got a daughter, Gemma, whose birthday is um, on Thursday, actually. Hey, Amy. Hey, Lissy. Hey, Cara. Um, and I have a son, Theodore or Teddy, who is turning three next month. So they are pretty much the lights of my life, but also drive me crazy. <laughs> but a big reason why I sew. I also have a fur child, Jethro, which you can see on the slide here. He is an Australian Shepherd and I love him. He was my first baby and you may hear him bark um, through the live. I apologize. He's a very good guard dog and likes to uh, tell me when there's packages or someone at the door. So if you do hear him bark, I apologize. I'm also a wife to my husband, Chris. He's a volunteer firefighter and an electrical engineer. And we've been together for 17 years. We're married 10 years this year and we're going on a holiday without our children, which I'm very excited about. Um, but together we are pretty, we're a pretty good team. So I've been sewing for over 20 years. I first started when I was a little girl. My mum taught me how to sew. And one of my first garments was actually a ball gown that I made when I was 16. Um, she paid for me to have lessons and I made this beautiful ball gown, which I should actually get a photo up so everybody can see. But Sew and Tell was born in 2020 um, and I really started to kind of help other sewists learn to sew. Um, I had started an Instagram account myself. It used to actually be Jim, Ted and me for Gemma and Teddy and me. Um, but I was seeing the same questions pop up in a lot of the Facebook groups about you know how to do certain things and I thought well I know how to do that so I started sharing bits and pieces and um, I also found myself searching a lot myself for different answers and spending such a long time trying to find the, the answers to the questions I needed so that's when I sort of started to just help more people and I got a pretty good response that people found me easy to learn from and I just really enjoyed doing it. I love helping other people. So that's when I really started to launch Sew and Tell Australia a little bit more. And as of today, I've helped thousands of sewists achieve better results on their sewing. So hopefully I can help you guys learn a little bit more as well. So that's me in a nutshell, but I really love to share my knowledge to help others demystify sewing because I know it can be quite tricky. And some of the things that we take for granted as more experienced sewers, beginner sewers don't know. Or I've done um, sewing these lives before and people just like to have a bit of confirmation that they're doing things right. You know, I think a lot of people learn online these days. So it's good to have that little bit of confirmation that you're doing the right thing as well. So I'll do a little bit of a, we'll just go through what we're going to learn today. Oops, moving things. So we're going to start with how to cut on the projector. So I use a project projector to sew. So I'm not going to go through how to set up a projector. It's very long and detailed, but you can find out more um, from some of the groups online. Like there's a projectors for sewing Facebook group. They are amazing. And there's lots of different people that you can follow online to find out more as well. But I can tell you now, I love my projector. It was a bit of a game changer in terms of up-leveling my sewing skills. So I'll start by cutting out the project. Uh, I'm then gonna go on to how to construct the main body. So we'll go through how to put that together. Uh, and then I am gonna show you my number one never skip tip on how to get a nice neckband. And I never skip this tip. So you definitely wanna stick around to watch that one. 
Then I will do the top stitching of the neckband. So I've got my cover stitch here as well as my serger. And then we're going to hem the sleeves and the bottom of the t-shirt as well. So again, I'll be using my cover stitch. Now I've got different cameras set up. If one of them fails, I do apologize. I do have backups, but let's see how we go. So I'm gonna flip to my cutting table camera and I'll move over to my cutting table and then give you guys a bit of a rundown about how we're going to do. But welcome to everybody. Keep popping in where you're from. I love seeing we've got Australia, Canada, Hobart, which is Australia, uh, North Carolina, Hong Kong, uh, New York. Where else? I think I saw in England. We have got a lot. I am very excited slash nervous about this one. So <laughs> let's go. So Kathy has asked, do you have any tips for large bust? I would have a look at um, the finished measurements. I just want to make sure you can all still hear me. So if you if you can't hear me, let me know. But I think the microphone should pick it up. So I'm going to be using a fabric I got from Ruby Jam Fabrics, which is here in Australia. Uh, I'm going to be doing this cute little sewing themed one for the front of my tee. And I'm going to be doing um, black on the back. So back to one of the questions. I can't remember who it was from. Um, there's my dog, if you can hear it. Obviously, there's a package being delivered. Uh, you can you can sometimes do a bit of a cheetah FBA. So an FBA is a full bust adjustment. And what you can do is just cut out a little hump where the bust will go. I'll show you as I get to the front part. But for now, I'm going to cut out the back. So if you've got your pattern, it is the same back for everything. So I'll get my fabric ready. Now I cut on a big AO cutting table. And if I miss your question, just say it again in case it's, it's slipped down the chat. But I'm going to lay it all out. So the thing I love about projectors is you really don't have to waste all that time getting things cut and or printed or stick it together. You don't have to go to the shop and get a copy size printed. It's just I've loaded this up, I've loaded up my size and now I'm just going to lay it out. So I've got the cut on the fold. Different pattern designers have different ways of doing it so sometimes you will get a piece that is unfolded so you don't have to cut on the fold but this one's on the fold so I'm going to do that. Now I have a big sheet of galvanized iron under here so what I have is these little magnets I don't know if you can see them but I then just pop them on top of my fabric and that helps to hold the fabric down so I'm a big fan of that and then I'm going to get my rotary cutter. I am team rotary cutter. I would actually love to hear in the comments if you are team rotary or team uh, fat, uh, scissors. But I am team rotary. And I'm, I've am i already done my measurements and I know that I need to cut a 2x. But I'm actually going to grade from a 1x on top. So I'll show you how I grade. It's probably a bit hard to see but the... You'll be able to see it better on the white, but I'll start from here. So I'm, I've got a three X on the bottom, uh, two X on the bottom, and then I'm going to grade up to a one X at the top. So this is literally my first piece cut. This is my back piece cut. And that is how simple projectors is. So definitely easy. I'm just gonna see, how do you tell me if you need an FBA? I will answer that Ashley. If I don't get to it, remind me when I get to cutting out the front. Um, got a lot going on but definitely we'll have a look at that it's generally if your bust size 
is more than four inches from your upper bust size, I believe, from memory. So now with the projector, all I'm doing is moving over my next piece. I want the sleeve. I might actually do the rest in my colorful fabric. So I'm gonna chuck this over there for now. And this should hopefully help you see a little bit easier how to use the projector. So I'm gonna go to my front and I'm gonna do the scoop neckline. Yeah. So I get my piece up here and now I'm going to lay out my fabric. Now this is directional so I want to make sure I'm getting it right. So I lay it out, you should hopefully be able to see it a lot better now, the, um, the pattern on it. But do we have any projector sewists live at the moment? Tell me how much you love your projector. Because I cannot get enough of it. I'm not saying I'd sell my children if I had to give it up, but you know, it would, it'd come close. Okay, so I'm laying it all out. Again, I'm lining up the edge to my cut on the fold. Now this is where we would talk about the FBA. So I'm just going to place my pattern piece down. Alright, so an FBA is a full bust adjustment, which is when you want to, when you've got uh, a bust that is bigger than usual I guess. So um, Amy can correct me if I'm wrong but it's usually when you you measure your upper bust and if you have a difference of four inches or more for your full bust then that's when you would look at doing a full bust adjustment. It's more prominent in like woven garments really. Knit garments do have a little bit more give to them but if you want to do a bit of a cheetah FBA with knit garments what you would do is around here where the uh, bust is, you just do a little bit of a bump. So you would sort of cut and then you come out and do a tiny little uh, hump and then you can continue on. And it just gives that little bit of extra room around your bust area to help with any extra volume I guess we could call it. So I don't find I need to do a full bust adjustment for these garments. Um, you can look at sort of if there's pulling around here or too many uh, creases but I'm going to as I said it's a 1x and a 2x so I need a 2x for my waist and hips but I like to have it a little bit tighter around my bust so I am going to grade out to a 1x at the top. So one of the good things I like about the projector is you can grade between sizes. So all I've done is loaded up my 1X and 2X layers. So the projector file does have layers. That's an important component of having a projector. And then what I'll do is I'll just grade it back in here. So I'll start by cutting down the bottom. And then as I sort of come up to here, I'm going to slowly grade in, as you would on a paper pattern, up to my armhole. Come around. I like the deep scoop. Here. Probably should have changed my rotary blade. And there we go. So as I mentioned, if you needed an FBA, you'd do a bit of a bump here and that would give you a bit more room around your bust to accommodate it. So I hope that answers your questions on that. But I now have my front T piece. It's going to be so cute. I'm excited about this. So I've got that one. Now I need to cut out my sleeve. So I'm going to do a short sleeve for this one. Even though it is coming into winter in 
southern hemisphere I get quite hot so I'm just going to do a short sleeve and because I am have graded into the 1x at the top um, I will cut the 1x okay so quickly cut this out I've got my first one and now I'll do my second one. But as you can see, using a projector really is quite a game changer. So if you've ever been curious and want to dive in, I highly recommend it. I know in the States you can get them fairly economically. Um, in Australia, my first projector that I got was actually a ultra short throw, so it was on a stand. Um, and I got it for 250 Australian, uh, 250 Australian dollars, and that served me for about a year. And then when I started doing so and tell Australia a little bit more professionally, I guess, and sh and sharing it as a, um, a business, then I actually moved to a rooftop projector. So you can't see it because the camera doesn't go that high but it is on my roof. So how do you get the projected image to the fabric? So it is connected to my computer, Vicky. Uh, I have it, I normally have it set up to my PC, but because I'm streaming on the PC, it's set up to my laptop, but it's just set up by HDMI cable. And then I just load up the file, project it over and away you go. So I'm just going to check the scoop neck band or those ones. That. So I need the scoop neck and there is a process of making sure that you are projecting at the right percentage. So for me, I need to project at, um, so for my laptop, I project at 20.8% and for my PC, I project at 32.3, but this makes it just a little bit easier to be able to use. So I'm just going to cut my neckband and then we're finished cutting which is exciting. So I've got my neckband here okay. and I'm also just going to mark the uh, quarter point I think it is or the shoulder point but I've got that there and then I will mark it on the other side as well so they are all my pieces cut just double check I've got everything so I've got my two sleeves I've got my front I've got my back piece and I've got my neck band so we are good to go so I will flip cameras, but I'm just going to turn the light back on. So excuse me for a minute, I actually have to duck down under a cable. Oops. Okay. So I can turn my projector off. I can show you quickly, hopefully it doesn't lose the connection. This cable is the most dodgy one. But this is my projector here. So it is on the roof and it actually projects onto a mirror. So you can see the mirror is there and then it projects down onto my cutting table here. So that is my projector set up. And the only reason I have it on the roof to the mirror is because I don't have enough room between the top of the table and my roof. To get enough clearance but that is how I use mine okay so I will come back over here and we will go to the overlocker oh, hopefully that didn't move <sighs> all right I'm gonna have a little drink I turned the heater on because I thought I would get cold but I'm actually quite warm.
All right, so Janet has asked, how hard was it to set up? Do you need good computer skills? I would say it's not hard, but it is different. It's a challenge. Um, I think Amy did pop up here the projectors for sewing Facebook groups. So if you scroll up a little bit, she has that projectors for sewing group there. They are incredible to go there. Definitely lots of um, good information. Um, and yes, I do have a steel plate under my cutting mat, Chantal. That's how I use my little magnets and I love it. Um, but yeah, I would say it might take you a little bit to get your head around how to use it. But once you have it set up, like I can make seven garments in a weekend, you know, you can just really get in there quickly. And if you're sewing for kids, you know, they, you blink and they're out of the size. So if you're having to reprint it or retrace it, it's just really frustrating. So with the projector, I'm able to just load up the pattern that I want, turn the layers on that I need, cut it out and away I go. So what I spent on my projector and setting it up, I've probably made back in spades from not having to use ink and paper and all those things. So um, my projector model, this one is, it's like, a, it's called a clock wee. I got it from Amazon. Um, I can link it in the comments after if you like, or I might put it in the replay email or one of the emails. I'll let you know what I used. Um, but yeah, there are quite a few that you can get in the States as well. This is an Australian Amazon one, um, or lots on marketplace too, but highly, highly recommend checking out the projectors for sewing Facebook group. But now we are going to have a look at putting it together. So I might just move my camera back a little bit so that we can all see how we're going. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is put our front and back pieces together. So I'm just going to move this to the side. So I've got my pieces here, my front and back, and I know that the front side is with the little lines on it, that is the right side of the fabric. And I'm going to get my two pieces. I've got my front and back. And I'm going to find my shoulders. So I've got my two shoulders here. And I'm going to match up my shoulder seams. Like so. And then I'm going to put a couple of clips in. Just going to make sure. And again, if you've got any questions while I'm sewing, please just let me know. I'm happy to answer them. So I like to use clips when I'm using knit fabrics. I just find they are a little bit easier. They don't put holes in the fabric like some pins can. So I use clips. I'd also love to know, are you team clips or team pins? Let me know in the comments. So Kathy has asked, I have to do a lot of pattern adjustments, length, bust, narrow, shoulder, does a projector work for this? Yes, it can. There are, you will get to know what you need to do. I know clips are good, aren't they, Susie? Um, but you can also do digital adjustments. There are programs that you can bring the pattern pieces in and do your own digital adjustments. So it definitely doesn't mean that you can't use a projector. But also, even if you don't want to do digital adjustments, not having to print, trace, like stick, cut, all those things to load up the piece. And then, you know, you could trace it out onto some trace and toile or some, you know, pattern tracing paper and do your adjustments from there, I think is such a time saver. I often have to do adjustments to pants, so I'll generally load up my pattern piece on the projector and then I'll trace it out onto trace and twirl and make my adjustments from there. But I haven't had to print and stick and cut and do all those things first. So projectors still are amazing in my opinion. So I'm using a serger for this. I have a baby locker claim. Uh, I think that's a model in America. I can't remember. Um, but you can use a normal sewing machine. You would just use a stretch stitch, but yeah, I'm having a, over, uh, a, if I could call it an overlocker, that's an Australian thing. I try to remember to say serger. I do have a serger, so I like to use that. So we're going to sew this together. 
Hopefully I'm not talking too fast for you either. I've heard Australians talk too fast, so I apologise. <laughs> Tell me to slow down. So I've done my first seam. I'll do the other one. Um, Ruth has asked, which fabrics are your favourite for this tee? Definitely cotton lycra. I make a lot in cotton lycra. I was going to use a rib knit, but I changed my mind at the last minute. So cotton lycra and rib knit are probably my favourites. Kim has asked, if the, is the material used cotton lycra? If it, if it does, does it make it warm to wear if hot? So it is cotton lycra. Uh, and does it make it warm to wear? If I... No, I don't find that cotton lycra is too bad because it's it's generally got a lot of cotton in it, so it's it's quite breathable. All my t-shirts I wear, I mean, this is a cotton lycra one. I've worn it all summer, and I'm quite happy with it. So now we have our front and back pieces together. We're going to do our neck band. So these are my tips. This is my number one tip that I'm going to share with you. So we're going to sew up our short ends so we have our neckband piece and we fold it in half and we're going to sew the short ends i don't bother with a clip for this because it's such a short piece now for the neckband i always always quarter my neckbands so I think it is so important to make sure you quarter your neck bands to get a nice even distribution around your neck. So I will first start by where the back seam is, fold it in half, and then I know that this is my front point. So this is the only time I'll use pins. So I'll then put a pin in the front. And then, so Susie's asked, would it be okay with cotton? Um, as long as it's got stretch in it. And what settings do I use on my overlocker? My overlocker has automatic thread delivery. So it is, I'm a bit spoiled. It's a very nice machine. So I don't really have to change much on it, but I've got my stitch width is on four. My cutter width is on six and a half. My differential is on neutral, so. That is the settings I have it on. If I was using something with um, tension, I would probably have most of my tension discs on a three. Um, and my differential would be on about a one and a half. And my stitch length would be on about three and a half. So really just depends on your machine. Have a look at your manual to make sure that you um, are using the right settings for the material you're using. So Dorothy has asked, what changes do you make if you're using cotton ribbing for the neckband? Um, Amy might be able to ask, answer this one, but I would say you may end up just shortening the length band a little bit. Cotton ribbing tends to have a higher stretch percentage, so you may just want to take an inch or two off, um, but Amy might be able to answer that one a little bit different. Depends on uh, if cotton ribbing is the same as what it is in Australia too. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too many different things, too many different things. Kara said in one sentence, I now understand the overlocker conf <laughs> surgery confusion. Yeah, I had to learn that they were different too. So back to this, um, with the neckband, so I now use my front point and my back point and I line them up and I now know these are my quarter points. So I'm going to put a pin in here like this. You can um, iron this or press it if you want to. I never find that pressing cotton lacquer works very well though. So I usually just kind of am a bit fiddly. All right, so I've now corded my neckband and I'm gonna do exactly the same to my garment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up my shoulder points like this and I know that is my center back. So I'm going to put the pin in it and then match up my front points 
and put a pin in it. And now to find the side ones, we're going to match up the front and back. And this is where I think people go wrong. So, so many people think that this is the quarter point and they just kind of like match it to that. But it, it's not. Like, as you can see, this is a good two, yeah, two inches in front of the shoulder seam. So, you really want to make sure you're finding your quarter points because it just makes such a difference. So, I'm going to do that. It can be a little bit trickier and like different with kids garments like the the difference isn't as obvious but I cannot recommend enough quartering your neck points so now we have all four quarters we know where all our quarters are so I can now get my neck band and I'll line up my back to my back piece and this is where I take all my pins out and I clip it instead. So the, the pins are just placeholders basically. And because we matched up our shoulder seams before, it is matching up there. So Tony has asked, how do you tie your thread ends off so they don't unravel? So I don't generally tie off my thread ends if it's going to be re-sewn into another seam. So none of these thread ends I will tie off because they're going to be re-sewn into a new seam. So they don't, I haven't found I've never needed to. And you'll see as I do it. So I will just clip my neckband and then I've got my last point here. Just make sure that it's all the right way. there so that now I'm gonna get I have little labels that I use all right so I've got my little label just says so and tell Australia gives some washing guidelines and then I will generally use a pen I've got a I've got a um, permanent marker that doesn't you know doesn't wash off and then I write my size so this is a 1xl slash 2xl so I know that I graded it so I've just written it on there and now I will pop that under the back like this and now we can sew. So I am, I generally sew with my neckband on top. I know some people sew with it on the bottom, but I like to sew with my neckband on top. So hopefully you can all see. So now what I do is make sure that my tag is down. I lift up my presser foot and I will pop it under the foot. And one of the things that I find helpful as I'm sewing it around and making sure that it stretches is just making sure you have all three raw edges lined up. So I'm just gonna get it started. So I kind of start it, make, get a couple of stitches on, and then I stretch sort of per quarter. And this is why I think quartering the neckband is really a good idea because it just gives, you don't have to work with as much of your neckband at once. It's just a lot more usable. And then I'm just, as I go, making sure that I've got three raw edges. I go around to my next point. Now I'm ready to take that clip off might be better if I see if I can bring the camera around this side for you. Sorry if you're getting a little bit <laughs> motion sick. I just want to make sure that you can see the best way. Hopefully this helps a little bit more. 
Um, Susie asked where did I get my orders. So I designed them myself. My I was a graphic designer in previous life. So I designed them myself, but I got them printed on Alibaba. So, no, AliExpress, AliExpress. I can put those details for anyone that wants as well. So again, now I'm just working on this next quarter. Show. Um, so I'm just making sure that I've got those three edges aligned as I sew along. And just remember, it's not a race. Like, if you need to take your neckband slow because you want to make sure you get it right, take it slow. No one is judging you. No one is timing you. I really think a beautiful neckband can, is, can be sort of what makes or breaks a nice garment. So take your time. Take your time on your neckband. So now we are moving to the next bit. Oh, I've got my camera cord in the way now. So I'm going to move the next bit along. Yeah. And I'm just going to, again, gently stretch so I've got all my all edges aligned. And I just check every little bit. Make sure they're all caught. And now we're coming up to the last bit. So I will just again line it all up. All done. So there is our band so we will top stitch this but not just yet um, so Kathy has asked any hints for dealing with the rolling edges oh you can try to steam it or put some starch on it but I just kind of just um, line them up as best I can and sort of just slowly go slowly do it as I go all right so I'm just gonna move this back around here And now we are going to do the sleeves. So I'll just, I might just push this back a little bit. So that was my iPad. Push this back a little bit so you can see a little bit better me doing the sleeves. So I'm going to lay it out like this. And we have our sleeve our arm size here. So I'm going to grab my arm my sleeve. I like to find the middle and then I will get the middle, open it up and line it up to my shoulder seam. And then I put a clip in. I then grab my shoulder or my edge and push it, pull it down to the, line it up at the end. And you'll notice that I've put it um, print side to print side, so right side to right side, right sides together and it's going back that way because we, when we do it we want it to come out like so. So then what I'll do is just gently align the curves. So I've got my piece here and what I do is I kind of go along and match up my curves. You shouldn't need to stretch the arm curve like you shouldn't need to have to stretch it to fit. So I just a couple of clips every inch or two. And that is one side done. And then we do the other side. So I'll just match up my ends there. And line up the curves again. Like this. So now I have my arm sleeve. Let's see if I can lay it out a little bit easier. Is all clipped. 
and I'm now going to serge along the top here. So I'll bring my overlocker on my serger, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you're all used to me serging and overlocking now. Bring it in a bit closer for you. And, oops, I'm caught on the bottom of my tripod. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to, as I go, make sure I've got two raw edges aligned. And, and surge. So I align my two edges. And I just follow the curve of the arm sleeve. Again, go slow if you need to. It's really no one's timing. It's important to make sure you're not getting any of your fabric caught under here. So I don't know if you notice, but I'm sort of constantly looking underneath, making sure I'm not getting anything caught under there because I am, I've done it before and I'm sure I will do it again where I haven't paid attention and I've caught up the fabric and I've had to unpick or I've got a big hole in my fabric and it's very sad. So I'm just going around. And that is our sleeve attached. So that's our first sleeve. I'll push it back and we'll do the second sleeve again. So yes, um, with sewing I really think a lot is practice and obviously trial and error. Just because I am, you know, a more experienced sewer doesn't mean I'm immune from making mistakes. Sometimes when you're tired or you're not paying attention, you still can make mistakes and you learn from them. You know, I still make mistakes and I learn from them. Or I don't and I make the same mistake 10 times and get very frustrated. So I've done my center point. Now I am matching up these bits. So does anyone have any questions so far? Is there anything that you think I've missed or you'd like to see me explain more or you're happy with all the um, camera views that you've been able to see? I'm a little bit nervous that my cover stitch camera has lost its connection so we may have to change that but we shall see. So again, I'm just lining up and again, remember you shouldn't have to stretch the sleeve to fit. I mean, if there's a slight stretching, it might just be because you cut it a little bit funny, but in general you shouldn't have to stretch it. So I'm coming back. So Susie has asked, if you do this project on a regular sewing machine, what kind of settings would you use? So I would use either a zigzag stitch or if your machine has a specific stretch stitch, some of them have like an overcast stitch or a faux overlocking stitch, um, a, a lightning stitch you can also use. And really, one of the best things you can do is read your manual. Um, your manual should generally tell you, at the back usually, it's got like a cheat sheet for what settings to use for what types of fabric. So it's really the best place to have a look and see what it recommends. Lots of sewing machine companies have, um, you know, uh, customer groups, just like the Peekaboo customer group. So you might be able to go in there and say, hey, I want to use this on my sewing machine. What have others used to work? The other thing I really want to recommend if you are doing to uh, going to use a sewing machine is to make sure you use the right needles. That is very important. You want to be making sure you're using either a stretch or a ballpoint needle. Um, I use Schmetz, but I know you can also use um, organ in America. But in general, it's important to make sure you have the right needles. Uh, stretch and ballpoint needles will sort of push between the weaves. They'll push the, the fabric out of its way. It's hard to explain. 
don't know if I'm explaining it very well. Um, whereas the other needles will generally pierce through and punch the fabric. So it's important to have the right needles. Uh, so I've just finished this and then I can answer a couple more questions. Because we're nearly finished. Okay, so um, people are enjoying the camera angles. I'm glad. Uh, oh, there's my dog again. I apologize. <laughs> um, so Carolyn has said she uses clips a lot. Uh, yeah, faux leather and vinyl, definitely. You are the same as me. Well done. And Kathy has asked, what needles do you have in your serger? Again, definitely worth checking your manual because they will tell you. My serger takes H-A-S-P-X-1 or something. But I've got my cover stitch takes as the E-L-X. So it's, you just need to check with your manual which one to use. Okay, so now we're up to the next step which is sewing up the side seams. So I'm just gonna pull my serger back and hope it doesn't fall off the back because that would make me very sad. So one of my tips for sewing up side seams is I always start with my underarms. So I will match up my underarm points and put a clip in. I might clip these serger threads. So the reason I haven't bothered to tie these off or pull them back or anything is because this seam is going to get sewn again so they are going to get sewn into a seam so it is okay so I line up my underarm and then I pop a clip here and then all I do is line up my pieces make sure they line up and then I just clip it. So this is where knit fabrics are kind of good because if you have um, a bit of a difference here, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can sort of cheat a little bit. <coughs> this is the point where I've been talking too much. I need a drink. So excuse me. Kathy's asked if they're ballpoint. I think serger needles are specific for serger, so I would assume so. I'm really not too sure though, sorry. You would need to have a look at your manual and find, <clears throat> find out what's best. Okay, so I've done one side. So I've got that. I'm gonna do the other side while we've got the machine out of the way. So again, I will just clip off this little tail and I grab my underarm seams like so and I match up, excuse me, my underarms. I will generally put my serger seams one to each side as well just to reduce bulk. So I do that and then I'm going to clip there and line up my pieces so I've got this here and then evenly distribute my clips in between I would love to have music while I'm doing these lives, <clears throat> but Facebook doesn't let you. It says that you are illegally streaming music, so <clears throat> unfortunately you just have to listen to my voice. So now I'm going to sew down my side seams. <clears throat> and again, I sort of take it slow uh, until Till I get to here. I might move the camera around again for you just so you can see from this side and hope that everything doesn't get knocked. 
so I'll move that. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better for you all. So I'm coming down and then I just, as I go over it, I really make sure that I've got my underarm seams lined up. I love a really nice underarm seam. So I'm going there. And then I think someone mentioned in the, uh, one of the comments that I got on promoting today, they had trouble with their sleeves. So one of my tips is just always make sure you've got two raw edges aligned. Sometimes it helps if you just have the bottom edge showing a tiny little bit over. So you know if you have that bottom bit showing, you are going to have it all lining up and the, the um, material is going to get caught together. So that is kind of one of my tips for sewing up the side seams is, you know, you can have it showing ever so slightly like a mil, less than an eighth of an inch. I don't know what's smaller than an eighth of an inch or the equivalent of a millimeter is, but you can just have a tiny little bit showing. Now we've got this little kick out at the end, so I just basically pull it back. And we still keep out, <clears throat> I'll do it from this side. Still keep out <clears throat> little kick out. So now we can do the other side. So I just start again. And yeah, I take it slow when I come to my underarm seam because I want it to look pretty. I mean, no one looks at your underarms, but you know, I know. So here we go. So Suzanne has asked, what is the kick out for? That is for your hem. So it will make sense once I get to the hem, but you need that little kick out when you hem it so that it doesn't like curve in. So let's check our underarms. Oh, look at that. Perfect cross. Where is it? Where's the camera? Hang on. There, there. Look at that. Perfect cross hairs. I just, I love this. This is like good stuff for me. Let's check the other side. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy with my underarm seams. Small thing, but gives me pleasure. So now we have almost finished our t-shirt. So I'll do a bit of a clean up just before I head over to the cover stitch to do the rest. And I might actually move, um, no, I won't move it. So for the hemming, Again, I don't do anything with these seams, with these threads, because I'm going to be folding them over and they're going to get cover stitched along here. So the only time I tie off my threads or feed them back in is if I, if the seam isn't going to be finished into another seam. So um, Bethany asked, didn't catch what you mean by the kick out. I'll show you when I get to hemming the bottom, but it's to do with the hem. You need that kick out. So this is the kick out here to make sure that the hem sits nice and flat. If it didn't kick out, it would sort of pull in even more. Amy might be able to explain it a little bit better. I don't know the technical terms. I just know that it's good to have that little extra piece to get a nice, nicer sitting hem. So I'm going to move across to my cover stitch and I think I lost the connection on that camera. So I'm just going to move the camera I've been using across. Just connect this one. Move that across. And then I will also put this across here so I don't get stuck. All right. Now I have a 
baby lock cover stitch as well. I'm very, very spoilt. I also may possibly sell my children instead of selling this. Not really, I love them, maybe. Uh, but I love my cover stitch. It is a really great uh, machine if you wanna get a nice finish on your garment. It's what a lot of the professional or ready to wear garments are finished with. And it's those two lines with the decorative stitch at the back. So you can get a similar effect with a twin needle. And I just always think finishing off and top stitching your neckband is a really good idea. It just helps it sit a lot flatter. It's much nicer. Um, so Kim has asked, could you have made the whole garment with the cover stitch? No, the cover stitch is pretty much generally just for hemming um, and a couple of other decorative things, but you couldn't make it with, you wouldn't make it with, um, you wouldn't make the entire garment with a cu cover stitch. You could make the entire garment with the overlocker if you didn't want to hem it. Uh, but yeah, you definitely need both machines. And Amy is saying the hem has that little bump out because of the curved hem. Yeah, you wouldn't have that if it was a straight hem. So with the neck band, if you can see, it kind of sits out a little bit. I wonder if I can show it up here a little bit better. This is what it's looking like. Isn't it even cute? Might have to wear this one today. So at the moment, the hair, the neckline sits a little bit sort of not funny, but, you know, it's just not nice and, and um, flat and pretty. So we're going to top stitch it. So I have set my cover stitch machine up. I've got it on a wide. Just make sure you can see. I've got it on a wide. I generally like to do a narrow on my neck bands, but we're going to go with wide for today. And all I'm doing is I'm popping my needles under there. And what I do is I line up the edge of my neck band with one of the guides on the foot. And I just make sure that my seam is facing down. And I'm just gonna go over. So I like to trim off my little threads here so they don't get in the way but I'm just keeping it nice and flat and going around so again I'm always just making sure everything's neat and nice underneath it's not a race no one cares going around so I'm just making sure I really follow the guides on my foot so I get a nice even top stitch it is so I will generally try to make sure it's already been pushed in but I'm just gonna grab this little stitch there and I can trim these as well so I have the clear foot on my cover stitch so that when I come back around oh the other thing is if you're using a tag make sure it's down the amount of times i have sewn with it like this is very annoying very annoying but you know <laughs> i make sure it's pointing down and i need to make sure i've got that to the side and then as i'm coming in i am just going over a couple bring it up get my very technical duvalaka which is just a metal seam guide and I pull out my threads and then pull it to the back. Ugh, I had, do you believe, that entire time 
my thread broke. That's annoying, so I have to re redo that. See, sometimes even the best laid plans go to waste. So I'm gonna have to pull that out. It is a good thing about a cover stitch though, it undoes really, really easy. So while I'm re-threading this, Kathy has asked, hints for using a double needle, please. The fabric tends to tumble when I use tunnel using a double needle on knits. Okay, my number one tip for this is to do some practicing. I sat down with my machine before I got a cover stitch and what I did was I started with my tension on zero and went from there. So it's really a tension issue and what you want to do is you want to start with your tension on zero and then um, different stitch lengths as well. Lengthening your stitch length can help. So I'm going to get rid of that. For some reason my thread broke. it's caught. Why are you caught? Let's try that. That's better. I was caught on the cone. So yeah, with um, double needles, try lengthening the stitch length and then also just pu pushing the tension back. Have your tension on like zero and go from there the other thing is a really good steam like a steam iron can hide a manner of all sins and it will also help sort of even out the tunneling a little bit so i just need to pull out these bits I was waiting for something to happen. I thought, I can't go a whole live without one thing giving me grief. Let's try again. Right, so again, I'm just doing exactly the same as I did before because I really wanted you all to see it twice. So I'm just going around. If you had done this and you had very prominent needle holes, what you can do is you can give it a really good steam. You can also, I've heard of people using a block of ice and like rubbing over the holes and then kind of steaming it again. I've heard that's good for carpet too, actually. If you've like moved your carpet, like moved heavy furniture and there is... Um, and there's the indentations from your furniture. Rubbing ice over it apparently helps. I've not tried it myself, but I saw it somewhere. Okay, coming back to the start, take two. Go over a little bit. Get my juvelaca. My needles are up. Oops. Ah, much better. So, this is my cover stitch now. I'll show you in this camera too. It's sitting much, much flatter, looking a lot nicer. Very pretty. So that you do need to tie off your cover stitch threads. That is something you cannot skip on because they will unravel. But as I said before, I haven't, I don't tie off any of my overlocker threads because it's all getting stitched down or into another seam. But you do need to make sure that you tie off your cover stitch. All right. We're down to the last bit. We've nearly finished. So I fold over my sleeve hems about, what's that? Not quite an inch. Yeah, three quarters of an inch. 
You can steam it if you want to. It probably says to do that in the pattern. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> I uh, like to do mine on the fly. So again, I'm just going to pop it under. And then I sort of fold my fabric out or fold my garment out so I can see what's happening here. Because one of the things with the cover stitch is you can't see the back. So you can't um, stitch from underneath because you've got that looper thread underneath. So you do kind of have to get a feel for how it goes. I sometimes will feel to see, feel the ridge of the fabric and then you kind of see where your needles are going. But I just sort of flip it up every now and then and just check that it's all looking good. You can get fabric guides as well. I have a fabric guide. I just don't have it on today. But I just sort of fold it around as I go. Make sure I've got my threads to the sides so they don't get stitched. Does anyone have a cover stitch? Tell me who's team cover stitch. Or if you want to get one. I used to think I didn't need one and then I got one and it was amazing. So this is a cover stitched hem for my sleeve. So it's looking nice. So again, you just tie off your threads. Tie it off. Yeah, cover stitches are amazing, aren't they? I'm interested what models people have too. Juki, yeah. Um, I used to have a Janome Cover Pro 2000, but it was very temperamental, and I just didn't really take the time to learn it properly. And then I got my um, baby lock, and I love it. So this is the this one. It's good to keep an eye out on Marketplace um, for secondhand ones, but they are pretty amazing. Okay, this one here. Yeah, Amy said she loves a cover stitch. Had one and traded it for a Euphoria and never regretted it. Cost was worth my sanity. Isn't the Euphoria like the best cover stitch you've ever seen in your life? I just, I love it. Like it, it is so amazing. It never skips a beat, except when it snaps a stitch when I'm doing a live video. Um, but you know, as you saw, it was super quick to re-thread. And I just, I love it. It is so incredible. So in Australia, the um, cover, the Euphorias are $4,000, so they are not cheap, but I sold a whole bunch of stuff. I sold a bunch of the um, kids' old clothes and bits and pieces, and I saved my little heart out for my cover stitch and I've never looked back. My husband thought I was lying when I bought my first cover stitch home. So I was like, oh, I'm buying a cover stitch. And he was like, oh, okay. So I bought it home and he goes, you're lying. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, you bought another overlocker. <laughs> I'm like, no, I didn't. So I had to lovingly show him that it did a whole different thing. But then he was a little bit like, so it only hems. I'm like, well, yeah, pretty much. Poor husband, he just didn't understand. <laughs> So just tie this one off. And then the last thing we need to do is our hem. And then we are done. So hopefully you've all found it pretty good. Oh, Cherie, if you go to the Euphoria, you honestly, you will not be disappointed. So this is our second hem, sleeve hem, that you can see. Um, okay, Megan has asked, as a beginner garment sewer, is it okay to wash use washable tape to keep the hem in place to cover stitch. Yes, absolutely it is. 
you can do that you can use fabric glue like the glue pens absolutely if that helps you with doing the hem go for it um, Shara said baby lock two cover stitch I love most things about it except when it's it's either stop or goes like a race car yeah it is um they can be quite quick um turn the dial down yeah I won't get rid of it yeah well I guess you've just got to go fast or slow <laughs> but yet like we've said it's no um not a race um lots of people saying they use the tape yep so someone has said I have the basic brother cover stitch figured I'd better learn how to use it before I spend the big bucks do you know I'm I would say it is always better to buy the best machine you can afford even if it's above your skill level because you're gonna learn on a better machine have less frustrations and I think get a better finished product so that's just my two cents I always think it's better to start with with um, you know what you can afford and the best you can afford but you know you've got to do what you you can as well um, so Linda said I'm a little nervous with the neckband still because it if it isn't right it looks bad well you know what practice and if it's if it doesn't look right unpick it you can try again so I, I would just say practice 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 so I'm just gonna do this final hem so I think you're supposed to turn the hem up about an inch some people um, often have problems where the knit the neck band rolls up it's because you're not getting enough like you're not leaving enough of the hem so I'm going to put mine up and this is why we had that little bump out so that it sits nice and flat so I'm just going to start on the back the curved hem is a little bit of a tricky one so I may end up with some bumps but you know what I'm okay with that because it's my garment it's you know individual to me and I don't sweat a lot of the small stuff because to me I think it's more important to have a garment that you like and is comfortable to wear and things like tiny little problems with the hem or if it doesn't look exactly like a store-bought one like that's kind of why I like to sew because I get something personal and unique so little things don't bother me as much go around again I probably should have um, ironed this so sorry Amy if you're cringing <laughs> but I also have been doing this for a while so if you're more of a beginner you should probably steam it and press it first or use hem tape as we've talked about so Linda said the video is cutting out a lot now I hope, uh, has it, is anyone else getting cutting out? I hope not. So I'm just going to do this last bit. Come around the front. Oh, good. <laughs> good, I'm glad I'm not alone, Amy. <laughs> but again, just for those following, like Amy and I have been saying, time Amy is obviously a professional um, pattern maker so she sews all day long so you get a bit more of a feel for it so if you're a beginner I would deck I would definitely recommend using either tape or giving it a good press first just so you've got a nice um, looking band most people are saying that the video is fine this is going to be recorded and I will send you all the link you will obviously be able to watch it in the Facebook group but I will be uploading it to YouTube as will Amy with the start bit sort of cut out so you'll be able to watch it a bit better and if you haven't registered I still would uh, because then you will get the updates for when that is live I think I put the registration link at the top in the comments or at the top of the um, live video so I would still register so that you can get the replay so this is my last one that I'm sewing or that I'm tying off and then we're done beauty so I've got 
I'll stand up and hopefully you can see. Look how pretty it is! I'm so happy. So this is our completed tea. I'm very happy with how it went. I hope that you all enjoyed it as well. So thank you so much for playing along. I hope that it was helpful for you. Um, I did want to mention, so I have a private membership group called The Sewing Corner. I think a few of you are in here at the moment, so hi if you are. And in there I give private and personal recommendations. There's a private Facebook group where you can ask questions, you know, have them answered. I um, Every month there's a tutorial, a specific tutorial. I'm a little bit late on this month because I had tonsillitis last week. But um, every month there's a different tutorial that I go through. There's a mini skill builder, so I've done um, twin needling before. I've done uh, how to finish overlocker seams or serger seams. Um, and then I also have a guest expert, whether it's either a hot seat style, like an ask me anything style live Zoom call, where you can submit questions for me to answer for you, whether it's a pattern you're having trouble with or a skill or something, and I can demonstrate and show, or I have a expert come on. So this month I've got Ashley from Charmed by Ashley coming on to talk about how to um, start with bag making. So I highly recommend going and checking out the Sewing Corner. I do have a special offer for anyone that wants to join. For the three-month membership, you'll get 20 USD off the um, initial quarter. So I really hope that you have a look at that. Um, if you've got any questions, you can always DM me. Come and find me on all the socials. They've been listed up throughout the live. I can, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. And really, I'd love if you came and joined us in the Sewing Corner. As you can tell, I really love teaching people. Hopefully you learnt something from this. And um, I will see you all shortly. Have a great night for those that are in the States and have a great day for those that are in Australia. See you later.